G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now what you're gonna learn in this video is how we can create a customized structure inside of a document set complete with folders and default documents so that whenever you create a new document set, you will have that same structure and it's repeatable every time. Now, that is really useful when we're creating, let's say, projects. So we're going to utilize share, um, document sets in this scenario for our projects. We're gonna create a custom document set content type and then create some default content inside of that document set. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our custom uh, content type. So I'm going to go into site uh, view all site settings. Now I've already enabled the site collection feature for document sets. So the content type is already available. I'm going to go into site content types and we're going to create a custom one. So I'm going to go create content type. Let's go call this uh, project document set. And I'll just leave it in the custom content types. The parent category is going to be document set content types. Now, if you don't see that, you need to go into your site collection features and enable the document set feature to make document sets available. So the content type is going to be document set and we're going to click create. Now, this is where we could, if we wanted to add some additional metadata to our project. So I'll just add a couple of uh, columns here. So I'm going to create a new site column. I'm going to say project uh, manager. We'll make this a person and we'll hit save and I'll just create two more. So I'll go project start date uh, and we'll choose a date and time, not a personal group, but a date and time. And we will say uh, project close date as well so that we can track uh, start and finish times all right so we'll choose date and time for this one as well all right so we've got our content type already uh, now to go so now what we can do is if we jump back into our site I'm going to create a new document library we'll call this one projects and then we'll add that content type to our library so we'll call this library projects, we'll show it in the site nav and we'll hit create. That's gonna create our document library. Then the next step is I'm going to go back into site information, view all site settings, and um, sorry, not uh, I need to go into the library settings, so my apologies. So we'll go to projects, we'll go to library settings, we'll go more library settings, and then we need to jump into advanced settings and we need to enable the ability for us to manage content types. So I'm gonna click yes. And I'll scroll down the bottom and I'll click okay. So now we've got that enabled, we can now add our um, content type to this library. So add from existing content types. And we're going to choose our custom content types. We're going to say project document set and we'll click okay. That will now make that available on the new menu. All right, so if I jump back to the library, I'll go new and I've got project document set and that metadata that we added to the document set is now available. You see, we've got a project manager, start date and end date. Now, what about having some type of structure inside of our project document set? So this is where we can go into our library settings and I'm going to do this at this library level. So I'm going to go into my project document set at this library. I'm going to go to document set settings. Now there's a section here called default content. Okay, so default content, we can specify some files that we want to every single project to start with. And we can have a structure where these, do these documents can actually uh, sit inside folders, all right? So we might have a folder, uh, let's go a folder called project initiation. Project initiation. Um, we're going to choose a document. I've got a, a, a templated document project initiation uh, document that we're going to start. So I am going to just grab that uh, document and I'm just renaming a document over here. And let me grab that. I'm gonna choose that file. Let me just find it. There it is. Uh, and we're going to put that in the folder called 
project initiation. Now I'm also going to add a planning folder. So I'm going to go O2 planning. Now I'm going to pop in a schedule. All right. So I've got a, a template for our schedule and I'm going to upload that. So now we've got two files and two folders that when I create this document set are going to be included. All right, so I'm just gonna go with that as a step one. So I'm gonna click okay. All right, so now when I go back to projects and I'm going to go to new and I'm gonna to go to project document set, I will then say uh, project copilot Actually, yeah, Project Copilot will do. And we can give it a description. Project Manager can be Nesta on this one. The start date can be today. So we'll just hit today's date. Uh, that's not today's date, that's yesterday's date. And we'll go Monday the 14th and we'll hit save. So now, when this, doc when this content type is creating, we're going to be presented with two folders. Inside of these two folders are those two documents that we've got, all right? So we've got our uh, project initiation and we've got our planning folder with our schedule. The other thing that we can do here is you may have noticed that in our library settings, in the document set settings, so if I go to document set and I'll go to document set settings. You can see the default content type here is of just the general document. So what we're going to do is I am going to choose, I'm going to set, uh, create a custom document content type this time called project initiation, all right? So let's jump into our site content types. I will then create a new content type, but this time I'm gonna say project initiation document. I am going to say this is a document and it's based on the default document content type as the parent. So now I've got a project initiation document. I will say, let's create a new column, uh, project initiation, uh, initiation date and we'll just choose a date and time column for this one. All right, so we'll go select from content type, we'll go date and time and we'll hit save. All right, so that will be just custom to this project initiation document. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our projects library. We're going to then go into our library settings. We're gonna go back into our document set. Now this here, into document set settings. Now here we can see allowed content types. Now this time here we've got the, the document content type, the parent, the default as available. Let's go and ch now choose our project initiation document so that it's available for us to use uh, and allowed. Now here, I'm going to change this to project initiation document, all right? Now before I do that, let's just have a look at something. So I am going to jump into, I'm going to add it. I'm going to show or hide columns and I'm going to show or hide the content type column. All right, so if I don't see it here, I am going to go into library settings. I'm going to go more library settings. And this one, I'm just going to jump into down the bottom, all documents, and I'm going to choose my content type as available in that view. You can see we've got project document set as the content type for the document set. But inside here, I've got the folder and inside here is document, all right? So after we make that change, we're gonna come back and have a look. So I've got project initiation document there. I'm going to click okay, all right? So now I'm going to create a new project. We'll wait for that to save, that's saved. So now when I go to new project document set, let's go for uh, channel guru and we will say project uh, manager is Adele. The start date, we'll just backdate the start date of this project to the 10th and we'll hit save. 
That's gonna be created again with our folder structure, with our templated documents, all right? So I still got planning, I've still got project initiation, I jump into planning, I've got planning as the document content type, and I've got the project initiation now, but this has now been defaulted to the project initiation document content type. All right, so that's a, a lot different and that allows us to have a really structured uh, way of creating um, our information architecture for our projects. Because if we think of a content type as a group of metadata and we'll just stick with metadata, our project initiation document might have specific metadata to that document, whereas a planning document might be different. So what I would do in this case is I would create a new content type called planning, a planning document, and then associate uh, that content in that folder to planning. All right, so we can build out that information architecture around the, the project document set and also the content that lives inside that document set. Now, another interesting thing here is that you may have noticed is that each of these documents is prefixed with the name of the document set. So if I jump back into our document set settings here, and you'll see that there's a little tick box here, add the name of the document set to each file name. So what that's doing is that any document that uh, these documents that are being created in here will have that uh, document set name prefixed to that, uh, to that file as well, all right? So there we go. Having the ability to create default content in a structured way inside of a document set can be extremely powerful. We can get some um, some great starting points for different scenarios, all right? It provides consistency and a structure that people then don't need to go in and create folders and then upload documents and things like that. We can actually control that from that document set level, all right? So I hope that brings you some value today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.